Welcome back, guys. It's another episode of For the Republic. I'm your boy, Louis Valentin. There's uh, our good friend, Garandib. How are you? How are you, my friend? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so indeed. All right, man. Um, going to get started with this episode as we were talking before we got on live. Um, This Hunter B- Biden business, this Donald Trump business, uh, <laughs> yeah, UFOs. <laughs> A bunch of stuff going went down this week. Um, I'm not a fan usually of that conspiracy. You probably heard about it, the one where it's like they're only doing the UFOs as a distraction for the for the government corruption. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just like, well, maybe maybe it's all happening at the same time. Maybe it's all gonna maybe it's all gonna go down at the same time. Who knows? Yep. Yeah. So, That's true. um, gonna talk about Hunter <laughs> Biden first. Hunter Biden, obviously, um being charged with by the Department of Justice for, I guess this is like the tax evasion or um, what are the exact charges, Karen Deep? If I have those on there. No, one was tax. The other one was uh, gun. Gun something. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, illegally, yeah. Yeah, so this it is the yeah. case where pretty much he failed to pay taxes um before deadlines and pretty much pretty much is really about taxes but they can just throw in a bunch of stuff in there because he's gotten caught for uh po- illegal possession of a gun um they're not catching him for the drugs i guess i guess they don't have charges to substanti- substantiate that there was drugs and they're also not using the FARA act so obviously um FARA, as you guys know is when you're a for- like you're an american citizen but you're acting on behalf of a foreign company or a foreign government and you make your pay so you're like an agent you go to the united states and you lobby i guess which is what he kind of did and you're supposed to register as a foreign agent because obviously you're a person from a, from a different country coming to lobby on behalf of them to the american government so you're supposed to um, uh, and so it turned out that he never did that obviously um for obviously the reason obvious reasons are because he's like my dad is the is a senator why do I have to um why do I have to register as a foreign agent? And then it turns out that he and Mr. Um and then John Kerry's grandson, which is this is like we're gonna add him into this thing now. John Kerry's grandson, um, they're in business together, I guess. And so mm-hmm. um they're both getting charged for this and there was a the case had come now to its finalization this week, and there was a rumor of a plea deal. Then everyone on the right was complaining, like, "Oh my God, see, this is another sign of the government corruption." And then everyone on the left was like, "This is justice being played out." But what we didn't know is that first, like, the right couldn't have been any more correct about what they were saying. This was obviously a a, a, a fake deal because and it's also shady because the what from what I heard, for what I my understanding is that. The DOJ, the Department of Justice, and uh, Biden's lawyer, uh, was this like uh, Chris, uh, Chris Clark, I think, or his last name is Clark, um, pretty much faked, made a deal where Hunter Biden would be um, allowed to do like, you know, some fake probation to get this tax charge off with and never go to jail, never get, just, you know, pay the fine, I guess, which he's going to do regardless. Mm-hmm. And then... He could pretend to do probation. It's like a six month or year probation, but really, when like really when you get those, you can really just do like three months, and then usually when people like this usually get off after three months because it's like, all right, it's, you're done, you did it, no one's gonna care anymore. And then that was one of the deals. But the other shady part was that, which is the, which the judge had never seen before, was that he was gonna get immunity from everything else. So, if the gun charges were out, he would be pretty much getting immunity from any future gun. So imagine like any future crimes he commits will not be um, dealt with because this deal is going to give him immunity from all of that. And also it's the FARA Act, the FARA charge, because you have to be a, a registered foreign agent, which he never was. If he if he were to get charged, that would also be immune. That was the deal they had between the two of them. Um. Then I, then I learned that uh, the... Um, The lawyer of Hunter Biden pretty much called the courts. A lot of shady stuff happened. Called the court. Apparently impersonated impersonated a federal uh, Department of Justice employee and then told the court, hey, 
we have a plea deal made with Hunter Biden's team for immunity and everything. So the judge just needs to come in and rule this and then gotta and then get out and then say, hey, we're done. You know what I mean? Like it was just like, hey, there's a deal. Don't look into it. Don't do anything about it. It's all been settled. And mm-hmm. I think it was like to the court clerk. I think that and I think obviously the clerk bought it because I guess they checked with the Department of Justice and they're both colluding, obviously. To get right. done. the judge though comes in, you know, this for this trial date. You know, she comes in and she's looking at this deal and she's like, okay, I've never seen anything like this. You know, she acts as like, um, is this an ordinary she acts as the Department of Justice official is like, hey, is this the prosecution, obviously? She's like, is it normal for this person to have all these like immunities? And they're like, oh no, it's not normal, but it's something we're doing here. It's like, okay, weird. So a second, it's like she just like kind of read just acts as like, you know, acts as questions to kind of understand like this deal. She's like, okay, if there are gun charges, is he gonna be immune from them? Yes. Okay. And immune from them from prior gun charges? Yes, but not only prior, also future gun charges are immune. So then that's like the yeah. other uh, crazy thing. It's like, okay, I've never seen anybody get pardoned before they commit a future gun charge. It's like, you did, you had gun crimes. The gun crimes is really just, he wasn't licensed to have a gun. That's really just the main, the biggest, I think, uh, charge he has for gun possession. It's like unlawful gun possession. That's the one. And then it's like, uh, yeah. And then it's like, not only are you going to be forgiven for those, but if you do them again, if you do them again in the future, you're also not going to get in trouble for that because this deal gives you the immunity, which is also like, who who gets this? Nobody, first of all, nobody ordinary gets this. You or me yeah, are exactly. this deal. <laughs> you and me are. You got to be special for this. Yeah. yeah, you got to be the son of the president. <laughs> like, and then uh, Hunter Biden was also charged with possessing a revolver for about 11 days in October 2018. Oh, 2018. While being addicted and a lawful user of a controlled substance. That's funny. <laughs> so it's also that. All right. Well, there you go. There we go. So then, but they're also, he's, he's getting immunity for everything. And then the other thing is, I think the last one is the Farah charges. It's probably in there uh, for not being a registered agent. And pretty much they're saying, the deal was supposed to be that they would be granted immunity. So the judge acts as them. The judge, she acts as, hey, are they going to be granted immunity? And the, the DOJ guy says, no, they're not. Not for that. And then the Hunter Biden team pretty much freaks out and says, well, that, that wasn't what we agreed to in the deal. And then the DOJ pretty much said that, okay, well, there's no deal then. And then the Hunter Biden said, you're like, yeah, because I would never agree to a deal in those terms. Something like that. And then it just mm-hmm. went down. And so I guess I'm going to share a video, a video, uh, a video of the, um, no, no, okay. I'm going to share a video here about the Hunter Biden team. That was actually covered live on television as it was going down. Let's take a listen. And they said, okay, so you're asking me to accept a plea agreement, but does that cover any potential charges? And she referenced the work that Hunter Biden has done for entities in foreign countries. And she said, does this preclude you from being bringing Farah charges in the future if I accept this plea agreement? And the government said, no, we could bring those charges. The defense, Chris Clark, acting on behalf of Hunter Biden, disagreed with that and said, no, that's not my understanding of the agreement. And then the federal prosecutor said, there, then there's no deal. That was at 1131. Uh, and Chris Clark, who represents Hunter Biden, says, as far as I'm concerned, the plea agreement is null and void. Just as I left the courtroom itself, the judge determined that there should be a 10 minute recess to try and figure out whether or not the two parties can quickly come to an agreement. That was Tom Winters at NBC. He's an absolute pro. Uh, t- All right. So that was the. Um... <laughs> Yo, that guy looks just like you, man. Yeah, that's me. That's um, that's my cousin. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah. So, but yeah, it like just this deal. This like it's a corrupt deal, and it just falls apart because I guess they didn't want to go through with it. They, I guess they just, I don't know what happened, but probably someone at DOJ after making this like this corrupt deal probably just backed out and said, you know what, um, or probably maybe in the midst of the judge asking all these questions, they didn't want to get. I guess I don't know. They probably just panicked and it just collapsed because I don't think the judge. I don't think they any of them the prosecution, which is by the way, it's it's like the most it's like the most corrupt prosecution because they're obviously siding with the Bidens here. 
They're not fighting for justice. They're not actually trying to do their job. They're not trying to, because if they were, they wouldn't be making a, this type of plea deal. They would be sending, they would be trying to get him to go to jail. He'd be paying a lot of taxes. It's like he's been committing all of, like, it's not just one crime. It's a bunch of stuff. And so. How much, how much does he owe in taxes? I think this charge was about, I don't think it was like just a couple million because I think it's only one, like one instance. I don't think it's like a lot of, uh, so right. I think he's saying that it's, uh, I think it's between 1.1 million to 1.5 million federal taxes before the deadlines. And that's probably just one year. So it probably not be, you know, um, everything. Okay. And so the judge obviously wasn't ready to make a, a deal. Um, you know, I think there were probably there were just like these disagreements that happened afterwards. Um, mm -hmm. after they had made the deal, probably in the first part, and then so you know, like when it came to the, to the fair act, the fair act charges. Um, the Justice Department said no, but then the Biden team was like, "Oh, I thought yeah," and then, well. And so then the judge afterwards was like, hey, let's take a 10 minute recess. Let's get this. Uh, let's try to get this done. You know, let's try to get this done if you guys can get it done. But it just seems like no, neither side could get to a deal. So it's going to keep going on for a little while. Do I think there's going to be a deal? Yes, <laughs> because he's not going to go to jail for anything um, for anything like this. Uh, what do you think? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, I, no, no matter what happens, I really don't think they'll get in trouble, especially the son. So, I mean, like, what's next for him, then? Nothing? They're just going to leave it out? No, he's, they're going to have to make a deal, or they're going to have to come to, uh, uh, you know, if they ha there's going to be a deal, probably. If not, then he's going to be charged with, uh, with, the, with the, what's, what's on the book, you know, what they have to get charged with, what anyone normal would get charged with. And that's what's not going to happen to him. He's not going to get that. Uh, but is he going to go to jail? Is Joe Biden going to be going to jail? No, none of that's going to happen. It's like anybody who thinks that's going to happen is... is um. Is fooling themselves. Well, corruption at its finest. Well, yeah, exactly. It's like they get away with it, and then there's going to be a deal for him to get continue to get away with it. And it is what it is. And it's also funny. It's like this happens on the same week that uh, Trump all of a sudden um, this happens, and then like literally the next day, Jack Smith, who's the um, the boxes, the the documents, the classified documents, special oh, counsel, right. who's charging Trump yeah. on those. Pretty much improper handling of, but now he's trying, now the, the charges that they're going to put out are pretty much like conspiracy to, uh, you know, leak out, um, what's that called? Uh, classified information, conspiracy, uh, there's a bunch of conspiracies, obstruction of justice, uh, sharing classified information with other people, um, using this for other acts. It's like, there's just a bunch of things being tacked on there. Now there's a um. Now there's a, more charges that they're adding on there because there's now apparently witnesses and more defendants, um, and so they added that literally. You know, this is why the people who say that it's all conspiracy because you know they can't let Hunter uh, get away with anything. So instead, so in order to hide that so people don't pay attention to the corruption, they do things like Trump and they do things like the um, like the UFO hearings because. Hey, guess what? And so it, it's a big mixed up conspiracy. It kind of has its flaws. That's why I don't really adhere to it. But it does make a lot of sense because it's like, well, um, you guys are just, you know, it can't be literally one day after Hunter Biden's plea deal falls apart. You guys come in and with the Trump things. It can't be literally the next day out of nowhere. So uh, what happens is that now they're adding charges that the Trump team conspired to, again, again, obstruct justice. I don't know how many times you can obstruct justice. Like how many times can you do that? And yeah. so there's more of those. And then also that they apparently, what they're alleging is that they have witnesses that will say that the Trumps, that Trump and his team wanted to sabotage the evidence, which is another charge. And then the third is that they wanted to delete the video cameras, the footage of them, I guess, looking at the box of the classified information, or I guess them moving stuff around. I guess they want to delete all the security footage relating to these um, documents. And the witness that they have is apparently the janitor, or I think the handyman, which is like some Hispanic <laughs> guy, um, who like um, apparently alleges that he overheard of them. Of course, he's Hispanic. About... Yeah, and so apparently it's like he overheard them talking about that they wanted to, 
not that they did, but that they wanted to, or that people on the team were just discussing, what if we did that? Like, it's not, it's not actually doing it. It's saying that they wanted to, but not doing it. Because they asked this, it's like another defendant now. So because they asked the man, it's like, well, did you see them going to the video room and doing this? And it's like, no. Did they actually, did they tell someone to delete video? No. What did they do? Well, he said he wanted to, and like, could we do that? And what would happen? Is that like, okay. well, exactly. It's like, well, what doesn't that like count as freedom of speech? Can't he yeah. like, question things? Can't he like complain? Like he, like, this is just probably him complaining. Like, oh, I want to delete all the videos. It's like, you know. He's just curious. He's just curious. It's like, well, like, it's like, he's just, yeah, it's like, he's also just complaining. Like, yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. yeah, you would obviously complain. And so that charge comes out now, all of a sudden, after the fact that they were, um, after the fact they were um charged with, with what's this called? Um, after they got what, yeah. What are his, what are his new charges? I'm trying to look for it. his new charges. I think are probably just obstruction of justice and a bunch of other things. Trying to claim that he tried to delete evidence and uh, tamper with the findings. Um, it, it's probably going to be a lot of uh different stuff in there. Oh, wow, that, that's that's wow. <laughs> all of a sudden we're getting new charges. Ooh. Exactly. All of a sudden we're getting new charges. That's the crazy. Thing. It's like um what. Oh, wow. so, so apparently um, he's, he's facing 40 charges in the case. Yeah, just on this one. Just on this one. So, uh... They're, yeah, they're, they're really trying. <laughs> yeah. And so then CNN comes out with a new article today, um, which we would say, it's like an opinion article saying that the chances of Donald Trump being reelected as president are very real. And, <laughs> like, is that supposed to be a, 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 a scary thing? It's like, that's not scary to me. It's like, good, good. Um. Yeah. People are coming. No, but isn't it like the same thing always, like always, over and over again, that uh, like they're just you. They're trying to rile up all these charges, I guess, to make it look bad, so that in a general election he has all this baggage. Because I don't know. I don't know. I think obviously they would love to see him in jail. I think they would love to see like I, this idea that they don't want to see him in jail. That's wrong. They do. They want to see him in jail. Yeah. I think what they're trying to yeah, do, for is, sure. yeah, it's either they, hopefully some judge lets him go to jail, or that he has enough baggage that whenever he's in the, after, because I think they know that he's gonna get elected in the in the not in the um primary. I think they know by now. I think they know by I now. I mean, like when when you when you think about it, before all this cases uh came up you know, from like last year, what baggages did he have? Well, he like had the baggage from January sixth. That's pretty much it. Oh, the, election, what else did have? the election denial, the people. Uh, this is the thing is that we get it, we see it. But, but then, but then at that, okay, so like those are his baggages, but how long will that last for them? That's the thing. Because well, the thing people will get, people will get bored out of it. Well, then, well, no, they don't. That's the thing. That's the mistake you make. And then it's also, it's because the media amplifies it all the time. They say election denier, uh, insurrection uh, creator, uh, COVID, and then they bring up the, the impeachments for ukraine and russia you know they like they just keep like the media amplifies it because they con constantly talk about it but it's like yeah i don't know it's like it's like the more you say it the more you talk about it it's like all right you're like people are already having enough about it it's like no what you guys saying it's wrong he's he's not you know i, I don't know it's it's no, it would it should that should make sense in a normal world. The problem is, is that we both know people that believe what the media will say. You can't challenge elections. You yeah. can't call George. You can't call another state and tell them to find you votes. Find the votes. You can't. You can't carry boxes, but they ignore everything the Democrats do because well, that's not what the media. That's not what CNN says, or CBS, or NBC, or MSNBC. Mm -hmm. or it's like well fox called arizona so it can't be fraud i mean no, fox did call arizona before everybody else did by the way <laughs> so it's it like they use fraud. those things they use those things to kind of justify this like false like false idea or these like these fake talking points that have no validity and so i that's why i think 
and I, I can tie this in with that, it's because I think they're using that to keep this is all baggage. They're just trying to throw this at him and say, here, this is what's wrong with him. This is what you can't hear anything that he's saying, right? They're not going to let you hear his what his actual policies or his, or like his ideas are. And if they do, they're making fun of it. It's like Trump thinks he can end the Ukraine war in 24 hours. That's so stupid because if he could, Joe Biden would. It's like, no, no, that's not the truth at all. And it's <laughs> like they're using that to say it's it's unhumane and unmoral and un-American and unpatriotic to vote for Donald Trump. It's like, no, it's actually the opposite. It actually would be patriotic to vote for Donald Trump instead of Joe Biden. Because guess what? Joe Biden, like Donald Trump's sons are not selling out the country's information for profit in places like Ukraine, China, uh, Vietnam, Korea, and, and, and Russia. They're not doing that. And uh, Romania, apparently, also. Everything's happening mm. in Romania. And so, like, that's not happening. None of the none of the Trump Jr., Eric, they're not doing that, right? I haven't heard of it. Because you know if they were, it'd be the first thing they talk about. I think they they I think didn't they try to uh adding charges to uh Junior? Donald Trump Jr. Junior Ukraine all that stuff. For Ukraine? No, like didn't didn't they do that around like 2017, 2018? Oh, for Junior, those is the Russia hoax. They were trying to say that Donald Trump Jr. Oh, yeah. tried to. They were trying to say that Donald Trump Jr. was trying to collude. Was probably one of the people. Let's just say this: he was the Hunter Biden for Trump, the guy going to Russia to to for the for the collusion, which never happened. Or the Hunter Jr. was the one talking to the Russians for Dad. You know what I mean? Just like how Hunter, uh, just like how Hunter works in China and Ukraine and Russia. For dad in the family that's what he was mm -hmm. trying to do that's what that's what they were trying to allege even though they knew uh, they knew by the way they knew by the way that hunter biden was doing all of this in 2015 2014 they knew it they this is what's so fucked up is that they knew they just don't care they just don't exactly they just don't care so um yeah any thoughts on uh this before we move on to um our next segment which i know you're gonna you're gonna enjoy a lot any thoughts on Trump? Yeah. On the any thoughts on Trump? Uh Trump twenty twenty four. That's pretty much it. I just hope that uh Donald Trump does well. Okay. Well, let's move on to the next segment, which is uh Pearly Davis. Pearl Davis, Red Pill, Pearly? Man of Spear, Fresh and Fit, Sneeko, uh what's his other what's the other guy named Biko? Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, that whole that whole they all, they, I, they, I, they, they all they all look alike. They all look alike. But they all look alike because they're all also all alike. They're all uh angry. They're all bald too. They're all balding, <laughs> angry. Oh my are you talking about yourself? Is this you? Are you <laughs> one of them <laughs> now? Real quick, I'm gonna get a wig. <laughs> They're all balding, angry insults. Okay, no, this is the point. It's like I'm getting tired of hearing all of them because they're they're just they're going off the deep end. So I guess I'm going to share some some yeah. tweets that um the latest tweet that we're going to talk about. This is kind of an old tweet. So let's just talk about this one. Um. Uh, excuse me. Bruh, bruh. And so let's um. It was a banana. It probably was. And so let's talk about this. Uh, let's see right here. All of this article right here. Take a seat. It's fucking uh, uh, Chris Hansen. Can you take a seat for me, please? Take a seat. <laughs> yes. That's she funny. <laughs> well, why don't you take a seat for me? <laughs> take a seat. 16-year-old chicks are hotter than 26-year-old uh, chicks. Yeah. One point two million. Yeah, them them twenty six year old chicks, man. Yeah, those twenty six year old chicks. And um, honestly, and she deleted the tweet. She deleted the tweet because she felt it was a problem. And it's like someone who, oh, yeah, it all of this, someone who tweets things like this, and who has a record on goes on the record and saying, "I don't care what I tweet. All I don't delete tweets because I stand by what I say. What I say is what I say. I don't care." It's like. So is this what? What is this? Because this this tweet has been deleted. What am I supposed to do about this? Like, one point two million views. One point two million views. 
is 1.2 million views. So I guess we're going to go back to where just think about it. It's like this. I mean, this is the thing. Um, if you guys follow them, if you guys follow Fresh and Fit, if you guys follow whatever, if you guys follow what are the rest? I don't know the rest of the names. Uh, Andrew Tate says some things like this a lot. Uh, do you know what are the other uh, Red Pill uh, podcasts? Do you know any of them? Any names that you could throw out there or people? I mean, there's the whatever podcast. I just said them. Whatever. Oh, you did? Oh. Uh, what else? Who else do you know? Uh, uh, no, that's pretty much it. I only know them. I don't know anyone else. Um, you got, you got, I mean, you got Adam, but I, I guess, Adam I guess he's, he's about to get red pills too. Honestly, yeah, he's, he's pretty much yeah. about that. Is that his last name? Sosnick, yeah. S-O-S-N-I-C-K, I think, or N-I-C-H. Something like that. You know, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, that's a Miami native. Um, you know he's all about that life, and you know he's now in his he's now he's forty years old, and he's trying to pretty much he's gonna get settled down and have kids now, and so his show is really all about you know how to make money, how to be I guess uh, fit, and then like how to get uh, laid I guess that's kind of what he says on his show, and he has a nice his co-host is pretty is pretty, um you know she's becoming a good co-host. Um, I don't really watch the show, I only watch the show occasionally whenever. Like videos come up on YouTube. It's because it's on the Valuetainment Network, Value Value Entertainment, Value right. um, on YouTube. So, I, well, obviously, we talked last week about uh, PBD and his podcast. Big fan here. I watch their every episode religiously. And um, Adam is on there, so he has a show, his own show. It's different. He doesn't really talk politics. He talks really about money. You know where to invest and how to get girls and like you know. And then he brings on all these people. And so he brings on, and he does what most of them do. He'll bring on the Red Pill guys. Um, there's a bunch of them. Let's see. I'll probably pull up the name um, from last week. Uh, some real, some some weird black guy who's in, who missed his flight and was in his garage. Um, his show is called Saucecast. S O S C A S T Saucecast. I'm not gonna play it, but uh, um, it gets heated because obviously. It's all about what goes on. Um, his name is Donovan Sharp. This is one of the Red Pill guys who um, brings statistics and uh, has presentations and lectures. And they, dude, and these guys have conventions in Miami. They rent out convention centers in like a hotel. You know, hotels have like these like convention areas. Yeah. Like what Prime America does and like Herbalife does, where they bring all these like disillusioned, unemployed, um, um, I guess. Uh, People who want to grift but don't know how to do it, and so they find a place where they can be grifted and also grift at the same time and sell people things they don't need in particularly minority communities like Herbalife. Herbalife is all bullshit. I know what I, I the Hispanic community knows a lot about Herbalife because there's people who there's still people who sell it and pretend to be like, oh, this is all about weight reduction and living. It's not, none of it is, none of it is. And so you have to buy the products to sell the products. And yeah, so it's just the Ponzi scheme. And so, anyways, the uh, the Donovan, uh, what's his name, Donovan Sharp. Uh, uh, before he died, it was also Kevin Samuels. He was another one, and you know, there's there's a bunch of other people who get on there, and uh, Sneeko's one of them, and uh, what's his what's his, what's his, what's, his name? what's the guy who's who's on Fresh and Fit? Um, the uh, light skin one. Yeah, he's bald. He's like the same balding as you. Yeah, you guys are like brothers. Uh, Myron. 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 Oh, fuck off. Myron. Byron. Uh, Usain. Usain. Myron. Usain. Obama. So this is the thing. So they're on there. Let's just get because I'm wasting time talking about them a little bit like this. And so they're um what they what they're all about is pretty much um they bring on these good women who are all promiscuous. They all do OnlyFans. They're all nightclub. They're all creatures of the night creatures of the night they bring these ladies in and they're all either whores in college they just left college and they're still whores and they're clubbing and they're in miami and then they're they're running the 30 what's it called the 308 we're in the 308 oh my god Miami! and so they're out there they go to the beaches they go to the clubs they like spending a lot of money they do only fans they do all the other stuff and these women are your typical feminists right they just they just are they've embraced the bad 
the boss bitch bad girl boss girl boss woman like don't say nothing to me because i'm a bad girl that's that's what they sound like most of the time and they mm -hmm. have they have the most horrible accent ever which is the la accent because that's what they sound like just imagine kim kardashian oh. that los angeles i don't want to i don't want to imagine yes you do no and so they have that accent they just talk like i'm gonna go to starbucks and I'm gonna get a latte and Starbucks. Really God. And so like what I do is that I produce content. And so if you ask them, there's all these funny clips. And they do have funny content. It's funny. To me, it's funny. I don't take any of this seriously. You know, there's that funny content where it's like that girl, hey, um, what like what content like, hey, do you know what no, what, no. <laughs> what country Dubai is in? And she's like, Oh, OnlyFans. And they're like, no, what? Um, no, she was no. They were like, uh, what country? What content? What continent are we in? Oh, what so she thought are we she in? thought they said content. Yeah, she, she was, was like, like only fans. Do only fans. And she's like, what? <laughs> only fans. And then it's like, no, what continent? And she's like, ah, oh. she's like, ah, oh, I thought you meant content. It's like, okay, yeah, but this is what they are. And by the way, these guys are not. They're not anything different. What? from these ladies these ladies are also these men and ladies are all about the content that's why they say stupid things like what well, pearly just to bring back pearly into this because pearly is one of these red pill people she they bring in these people these people come in these people come in they say all these outrageous things to get views most of the time so they say things like um you know uh 16 year old girls are always are cuter than uh, are more attractive to men than 26 year old girls and it's like what what again and then these red pill guys come out and say yeah because that 16 year old girl's a virgin it's like okay i i need to call the cops on everybody no they they oh my god because it's they're, really creepy it's and so too much it's pissing me off they're they're really why is it pissing you off because get pissed <laughs> off get pissed <laughs> off you're here to do that you're here to talk it's about the dumbest shit off. ever man it's really that stupid like they're overdoing it. They really are. And and I hate the fact that they call themselves red pills. It makes it even worse. Discuss it. Talk to me about it. Talk to me. I'm your therapist here. Talk to me about what, what's bothering you. What bothers you about red pill? I want my pacifier. Where's my pacifier? No, yeah, no. They they overdo it. And that, that tweet that you mentioned, too, it's like, but she haven't sat down and think like, oh, that's that's creepy. Exactly. The fact that you're saying that sixteen year sixteen year old girls are more attractive than twenty six year olds, that's a that's a pedophilic comment right there. So it's like how do you how do you not how do you not how how do you not process it? You sit down, how do you not process and think that, oh, what I just said was the creepiest shit ever? I mean you you delete the tweet, but it's still shady as fuck. Yeah. You delete the tweet, but then you keep posting things like, "Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm here with the godly people. I'm here for God." It's like, what? No, you're not. And it's like, I'm here for the, for the righteousness, and I stand by what I say. It's like, no, you obviously you don't. You don't stand by what you said. And so, um, no, it's that they do things like this. Why? Because that ties into their virgin, their virginity. Um, little, they, they, they're just so creepy. I wish I could break it all down in an easier way for you guys. But they pretty much yeah, it, it's it's really complicated. Yeah, yeah. So what they pretty much do is that they go, they bring. Let's go back to what they are, so people know the basics. So you don't have to bother watching them because you can just watch the short clips and you really get a gist of what it is. Because that's really what they want to talk about. They want to talk about um, why the women who pursue promiscuous lives are horrible, and why the men hate them because these men hate them. For, they don't want to mention why they hate them. They hate them, according to them, because they live these promiscuous lives. All right, that's that's not really your business. But these women do this. The problem is that they bring on so they bring on these OnlyFans girls, they bring on these nightclub girls, and they're dumb. They're uneducated. They do not know literature. They do not know Dostoevsky. They do not know uh, Tolstoy. They have not read Solzhenitsyn. They do not know anything about um, global political uh, uh, politics. They don't know the inners and outer workings of the global financial system. They do not know this. They don't. They know what crypto is, but they probably can't spell it. And let's just face it, probably the same thing would apply to the men there. I don't think the guys there have all the. I have also read Dostoevsky or Nietzsche or Tolstoy or Shakespeare or 
uh, any of these other people. I don't think they also know the inner workings of the financial system, the global financial. I don't think they understand what a tariff is. I don't think they could spell it. I don't think they know how to spell taxes. That just don't. Because it's apparent to me that these are just guys who spend all their time on YouTube. They spend all their time on TikTok. They spend all their time on Instagram. They read weird books about about relationships, which they have which they've never had. And then they get on this thing and say, you women, and they say you women, they're not just pointing out the 10% of women that are promiscuous, much like the 10% of men that are just promiscuous, because that also is real. We've met them. We've met men who all they think about is women. All they think about is getting pussy. That's all they think about. We know them. We've known them in high school. We met them and I knew them in college. We know them in our adult lives. They're men who think every single day about banging women. Mm -hmm. we know them you know them right yeah no we see we, them we, know, we know we know plenty of them we know plenty of them that's all they think about if they work if there's a new girl if there's if they're at their job and a, and a new girl comes in to work with them and she's over the age of 18 the first thing they're thinking about is oh my god i'm gonna fuck her i want to fuck her you know that's true you work on a team yep the first one if there's a new girl that comes in and she's not ugly and she's single the guys with you are going to be not you but the guy because you're in a relationship they have to mention that the guys that work with you that's the first thing they're going to think about mm -hmm. yes yes or yes no yeah. yeah yeah that's what they do and so we know yeah. that we know them that's 10 percent of men the thing that we don't do as men and say is say that all men are like this because we're all like this it's like, yes, we like women, but we're not constantly thinking about how to sleep with them all the damn time because we have, we're, uh, me, I'm professional. I have morals. I respect people's boundaries. It's not because feminism, it's because that's what a decent human being is. Because decency existed before the feminist movement. Don't let them tell you that. Don't let them tell you otherwise. Okay. It's like, but these guys, they bring these, these specific women. Notice how they don't bring normal women on. Notice they won't bring them on. I'll give you an example of a normal woman. I'm a big fan of mostly peaceful Latinas. We're going to drop their account hashtag, and we're going to drop we're going to drop all these people in the in the bio down below so that you can see where they're from and what they're like for yourself. I would I would hope you didn't have to see the fresh and fit people, um, because it's kind of cringe. And but there's one of them on mostly peaceful Latinas. It's Linda, who's obviously, um, you know, I'll wake up with Linda on IG. She's big into the political uh, space. Um, you know, she's a small business owner in Miami, um, you, know, you know, works for herself. Because this is also an alien concept for the people on Fresh and Fit, that a woman who's not in a relationship yet or out of what a relationship, uh, the fact that she has to own a business and or somehow work to make livings uh, meet and doesn't do OnlyFans, that's, that's weird to them. That's weird. That they don't know, they can't handle that. They can't handle that. For some reason, a woman who makes money for herself, and by the way, when I mean make money, it's not making money thousands of dollars. It's meaning making a living like a normal American. Because this, this is also what I'm getting tired of. I'm getting tired of people when they say, make I make money. Yes, you make money to fund your lifestyle, which means to pay your rent, to pay your bills, to pay your phone bill, to eat food, because as a human being, you need to eat food, to buy clothes because you can't be naked in the streets. It's like not nobody in America, not, the vast majority of Americans in this country are not, I'm going to repeat this, are not making thousands of dollars every week. And guess what? Neither are the people on that podcast. Maybe now because they have the views. But guess what? Outside, If they didn't have that podcast, there's nothing they're doing which is making them a lot of money. It's not happening. It's not happening. Because I'm also tired of hearing that. Like, what? It's like two things I'm tired of hearing, hearing of. It's like, oh, I make a, I, it's like, how dare she make a lot of money? What do you mean? How dare she pay her rent? So you want her, and this is, this is the other thing. They, they can't understand this because their logic is so flawed. They can't hear this. They don't want to hear that a woman is making money to obviously pay for her living because it's not a life. What I mean, lifestyle. It's not that she goes to the clubs. I mean, lifestyle as in that she needs to have a roof over her head. She needs to have food in her refrigerator. She needs to have the ability to buy clothes and pay her car note or buy a car or 
And when I mean a car, I don't mean a Bugatti because these incels are fucking closed minded. Anytime they hear car, they're like Bugatti because they can't they can't say Bugatti the normal way. They have to say Bugatti because they're <laughs> they keep humming on the nuts of Andrew Tate. <laughs> and so, and so they, they they can't they can't do anything else but that. They can't do anything else but that. They have to. They want to be bald. They want to have a tattoo. They want to go oh, to the man. gym because he says it's cool. And they also want to have like uh, rooms because they go, they have sleepovers. Because I mean, I get it. You have gym bros, right? You have gym bros. Yeah, man. But you don't sleep over with them. No. <laughs> no. That's what the tape people do. That's what tape does. <laughs> no. no. We don't do that. We don't oh, do that. Oh, it does this. <laughs> but they do because Andrew Tate says it's cool. It's like, look, look, I get it. You're I guess, I guess they, I guess they take bros on a, on another level. They took bro to another level. They, they think they're having slumber parties like women. That's what they want to do because they're just feminine. They're just feminine boys. That's really, they're feminine, undeveloped, childish adults who are adults just because time passes quick enough has passed faster than their mind and their brain can develop into a functioning, competent adult. But they're not that. They're incompetent, intellectually retarded boys who have mustaches and for some godforsaken reason have been allowed to drive with driver licenses. They have jobs. And for some reason, someone gave them access to a, a computer and a phone with Wi-Fi or data to let them go on the internet. Unfortunately, they have that access because they shouldn't. They shouldn't have access to that. They shouldn't. So those men, they don't. They're they, so. Just imagine a woman who's single because she maybe she's working or she's doing school, which they hate, by the way, because they 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 don't like it when women do college. They don't like it when anybody does college, even though college was <laughs> where people go, like. Uh, doctors, they have to go to college. So I don't really know. I mean, you don't want your guy, you don't want men to be doctors or you don't want women to be doctors. You don't want them to go to college. It's like college makes people dumber. I hope my doctor who went to college isn't dumb. It makes them dumber. It's like, <laughs> what is, per this is by the way, Pearl Davis says this. She says these type, type of things. And it's like, they're dumber because they leave as not Christians. It's like, no. And so what that woman says, I'm going to share this because I just have to know. I hope I still have it up. But, um, I mean, uh, she says these ridiculous things. Where's the other one? Oh, this is the other one. This, uh, this, uh, this one, she deleted this tweet. Where's the other one? Uh, this, she had another tweet where people were kind of complaining about the you know, stupid thing she says. Feeding the child sexual predator. Yeah, and she is. She is. She is. Um, Ten totally People fans. tend to get uglier when they get older. Yeah, I don't... I don't... <laughs> so... Alita says uh, this whole mindset of if a woman goes to college, university, she's going to be promiscuous is lower tier mentality. Pathetic. It is. A woman who wants to be a hoe is going to be one regardless of whether she didn't spell that right. So obviously she did not go to college. Uh, she gets an education or not. A good woman will stay a good woman regardless. Yes, yes, yes. This is this is the line I want to focus on. A good woman will stay a good woman regardless of the education or the money she makes at her job because guess what those things can be taken away from you but guess what can't be your inner values your inner morals your morals of saying hey i have enough respect for myself to not sleep with seven men a year by the way seven men a year i don't know if that, that i don't know if that's a lot or not i mean hey no but this is what pearly won't say is that if if byron sneeko and the rest of the dumbasses uh dumbass incels are they angry when, when, wait, let me flip this. Some college men are sleeping with seven women a year. Is that a problem? Is that a problem for them? I'm asking you. You it, probably it, it, it's, a huge, it's a huge problem for them. It is. But if a college man it's sleeps with seven women a year, is that a problem? If men sleep with seven women a year, is that a problem for Byron or Myron or whatever the fuck he wants to call himself? Byron. No, it's not a problem for him because he constantly talks about how men, and by the way, Tate talks about this too. He talks about how men apparently need to have sexual experience before they find the virgin, which is like the most 
what are you, what is this? <laughs> is this Mormonism? Are we just trying to be Mormons again? <laughs> is this Brigham Young? Are you Brigham Young? Just tell me that. If you told me I'm starting a new religion where I'm uh, where I want incels, I would be like, you know what? Okay, I get it. I get it. But instead, no. Again, to get back what the show is about, because I keep losing track. They bring all these these promiscuous women on there who are only 10%. Let's just say 10%. Let's just say. I'm guessing. I always put 10% because it is probably 10, 15% of women in the, in America, which is, by the way, a lot. It's millions. So let's just say 10 to 15% of these women are promiscuous. They bring this specific group on, on, on Fresh and Fit or whatever or whatever other demonic shows they have out there. And then they... Then the men on there sit on the other side of the table and say, you girls are disgusting because you're stupid and you have sex a lot. That's what they do. That's what they say. They sit there and they say that. And then they say, how dare you do that? But then if you tell them, but well, okay, Byron, Myron, whatever the hell your name is, do you have sex with women? And he'll say, yes, because I make money. And I work how, out. How old is he, by the way? I'm, I'm actually curious. I'm like... Too old. Too the, the number it is. It's unfortunately he's older than what he what his mind is at. He's he's too old for what he's he's whatever his age is. His mind is younger than that because he's he's a child. And so they sit there and then complain and they say, "You girls don't know what cities are out there. You guys don't know where where Paris. Where's Paris? Year up." which is actually accurate, but what country is it in? I don't know. It's like, who are you bringing in to talk to? If you want to, look, this is what I, this is, there's a saying out there in life. It's like, if you want, it's like, if you're looking for trouble, you'll find it. And so if you're looking for stupid women to, to berate because you think you're better than them, it's like, you're going to find them. And if you're looking for whores to berate, you're going to find them and you're going to bring them on your show and that's who they're going to be. But guess what? They're not going to be smart. The problem is, is that most people know that there are women like this. Hoes. I mean, we knew them in middle school and high school. We knew hoes. They were hoes in middle school. They were hoes in high school. Guess what? They're going to be hoes in college. But what we didn't do is then is that we didn't say that these women were like every other woman in the in the in the world is exactly like this. They're gold digging, uh, promiscuous women who want to go to the club, find the rich guy, and get with him just because they're rich. Because you know what that smells like? That smells like an incel. And yes, they're incels. And so what they do is that this is my theory on who they are. This is my theory on who they are. I think I've mentioned it to you, but I think that these guys, Sneeko, Byron, uh, that Indian looking kid who goes on with Aiden Ross, who's also the same thing. Neon? Neon? Neon's a... Neon. <laughs> same thing. Neon's this is an idiot. Neon. They're all idiots. Yeah, no, this is what they are. He's a, they're, he's all, a massive idiot. they're all men who in high school never dated and not alone just never dated a girl. They never spoke to a girl in high school. And I don't mean sp speak to a girl in a romantic way. I don't think they ever had a conversation with a normal girl. I don't think they ever did. And so they're jealous and envious because there are men now who have money. And they're angry that the hoes never touched them or looked at them in high school. They're angry that the hoes never looked at them or touched them in college. And now they're angry. They're angrier. Because now that they have a job and now they have some money, which is like, no, just ordinary money, like they work at McDonald's or Home Depot or Starbucks, and there's nothing wrong with that. Because guess what? People have to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. They're angry that these that the same hoes are being flown out to Miami to get fucked by rich men, basketball players, but maybe most of the time, or, you know, um, millionaires, like that guy who goes on whatever, who gets triggered by um, Lila Rose, who's actually a real woman. Do you remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, I remember that. All right. And so that then those guys fly out these women and they have sex with them. And then that same guy, though, goes on the show and then says that I prefer. I'm like, what are you doing? Man? You're just a fucking hypocrite. It's so stupid. And so what they do is that they say all those things. They say all these things. They attack all these women. But deep down, they wish they were the guys in high school and college getting touched and getting action, getting, you know, having sex with the whores. Because that's what they're jealous of. They're right. jealous that they're not the ones that have the money and the access to this promiscuous group of women, who, by the way, are physically attractive. 
because they have the BBL or they have the big tits and they have the lips and they have the face and they work out and they're active because guess what? Those are promiscuous women who are in that business. They're in that lifestyle. They, they're in that life. They're in that world where they want to look for a guy who has money and the access and they want to be on the yachts in Miami. They want to get flown out to Dubai and they're, yes, they're going to get fucked. That's what it is. That's what they're out there for. They're not out here looking for Jesus Christ and praying and oh my god and they're not looking for the islam they're not looking for they're not looking for ramadan they're looking for habibi because habibi is going to put her on a plane to dubai and he's going to drive her around in a, in a in a bugatti or a maserati whatever the fuck they want to drive maybe even a toyota corolla but guess what they're in dubai and they're going to get a jeweler a nice they're going to get a nice uh, watch and then they're going to get fucked and flown back to miami where they can resume living their domestic american whole life that's what it is. That's what the women, these women do. They're not out there. They don't want to read. They don't want to. Because guess what? The guys that are paying for them don't care if they do. They don't care. They don't care if they read. When a guy's out there, go, when a guy pays an escort or a hooker for sex, do you think he asks her, hey, what's your reading level? Fifth grade or, or 12? Oh. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. And that's the stupidity that these people profess is that they, they, they're they angry that these girls aren't smart. They don't want to be because they guess what? They don't need to be. As Joe Biden would whisper to a mic. Mm -hmm. They don't need to be. They don't need to be because guess what? That's not what they're looking for. They're not looking for that high. They're not looking for that high value man to settle down with. They're not looking for that. They're not looking for a real relationship. What they want is a rich guy that's going to spoil them and they can get fucked and they can go to Miami and Dubai. They're looking for Pointless, materialistic vanity. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for vanity and materialism. And guess what? They're going to find it. They're going to find it because there are men who just want a dumb bimbo to fuck. That's what they want. But guess, you, but guess what? You know who also wants that and isn't telling you? Sneeko, Byron, Myron, Fyron, Pyron, whatever the fuck he wants to call himself. And all the rest of them on whatever and on Fresh and Fit and then whatever. What's his name? Uh, uh, what's his name? Damien Sharp. What's this guy's name? Uh, uh, let me look his name up. Damien Sharp. Who? Well, from, from the whatever podcast? Donovan Sharp. And then there's a bunch oh. of other ones. The Fresh and Fit, all of them. Chris and whatever the hell their names are. Guess what? They also would like a dumb bimbo they can just have at home, a, like a trophy wife, and then fuck. That's all they want. You don't, don't let them kid you. That's what they want. Because they're just jealous that in their time, when they were young and in college, they did not have access to those type of women. And so the big reason, though, tie back in Linda and Bella, they mentioned this. They mentioned this all the time. And so they're, they come off as harsher, maybe because they're women, and they don't have patience, and they're old, and Bella's a mom, and so she's not going to have patience for little kids acting up, because this is what they are. These are little kids acting up. And so she's not going to have patience for it. And guess what? Neither do we. Or I don't. I don't know about you. But what they do is that... Yeah, and so that these girls, what they do, and these are actual women, and they're angry. They're and the, the fresh and fit are angry. And by the way, intimidated and scared of them. They don't want the Bella and Linda on fresh and fit. They don't want her on whatever, because they can't handle the truth. What fresh and fit can't handle the truth, and so. And before they try to accuse me of sounding like I'm simping, because I'm not. I I actually agree with what they're saying, and we both agree. It's like. You're just jealous and mad that you're broke and you can't pay for these specific women. Because guess what? Not, again, as we repeat, not all women are like this. Not all women are whores. Not all women are promiscuous. And so you're blaming all women that you also can't get, because that's the unfortunate reality. These, these incels can't get with a normal woman, a good traditional woman, because they're incels. Traditional women do not want an incel. You know why? Because an incel sits in his room Sits on his phone, in his room, on his computer all day, watching Donovan Sharp and Kevin Samuels, who, by the way, was fucking an obese whale, this obese black whale, who couldn't move an inch because she blamed her illnesses. She was fucking this, literally. And all this fat bitch did was cook all these uh, cholesterol-ridden meals. She would cook all these meals on a crock pot, probably. Like fried chicken and, and gravy and, and mashed potatoes. and, and, and all. Really? <laughs> Get him this. And fed him this as he secret, secret, in secret, as he then publicly went on and, and spoke sh and talked shit on the TV. And yes, some of the things, this is a problem. This is why they get the attention. Because some, they do say the right things. Yes, 
you should dress well. You should have manners. You should try to make money in your life. And I just don't mean just get a, a job. You know, you should try to aspire to go up, go up the corporate ladder and get a better job. And yes, I hate the word hustle. But yes, if you can get a side side gig and hustle, it's not even hustling. It's like, you know, like get a part. It's just called a part-time job, guys. And to make more money, good. That's good. That's Pretty good. Much. If you want to live a comfortable life, that's fine. That, those are good things. Linda and Bella are not angry that you're trying to do that. But they're angry at you for constantly, constantly pushing down all women, including traditional women, because you think promiscuous women are all women. And that's the biggest mistake they make. That's a big, There's also other mistakes they make in regards to that. There's also other big reasons why they're mad. And so they try to push, they do attack these, because those insults are just mad that they're broke. They're just jealous they're broke. And they can't have access to the good women that are out there, not the promiscuous ones. The good, not just the promiscuous women, by the way. The good traditional women who don't want to see a man sitting down at his computer all day watching these idiots and complaining that, oh, why are they going out with them and not me? Oh, I wish I, I'm a guy. Oh, my God. Instead of going out there and learning how to be an actual man, like a man should know how to change his own tire. He should probably know how to do his own oil change. He should know what antifreeze is. He should know where to put the washer fluid. He should know how to wash his car. He should know how to cut the lawn. He should know how to garden perhaps a little bit. And, and he should know how to change a light bulb. He should know what to do when there's a hurricane coming, which is go to Home Depot, buy wood, wooden boards, and not just laugh at Home Depot and say, hey, I'm going to go where the illegals are. No, go to Home Depot. It's time, it's time <laughs> to sit down. It's time to sit down, buckle up, be a man, and handle the situation. Like Jordan Peterson says, do you want to be the calm guy in the room at your father's funeral? Why your father's funeral? Why does he say that specific thing? Because people are closed-minded and be like, why father's funeral? <laughs> because it, uh, your father's funeral should reflect that an extremely emotional and chaotic time in your life. You've just lost someone hugely impactful, the leader of your family. The women in the family are going to be panicked. They're not going to know what to do. They just lost the leader. You as the son should be the calm you should stand there calm, not in the corner crying with the rest of them, like the insoles do, where they cry and say, why don't the women like me? I'm a man. I have a job. Yes, you do, sweetheart. You do have a job. But you keep crying and complaining about everything else. Why won't a woman love you? Because you're a fucking baby and you keep crying like a bitch. You're might as well a woman. Go out there. If there's a hurricane coming and you're living in Florida, go to Home Depot, buy wooden boards, put them up. Buy sandbags, put them around your property so it doesn't leak in. To hope the water doesn't leak. Try to do your best to avoid, to avoid and fix catastrophes. That's what men do in the time of need. That's why they send the soldiers in and the men, the real men, not the trans and the, the lesbians and the gay people when, when chaos is there. You know in New Jersey when there, when we had the hurricanes? Yeah. When the went out? Who was out there fixing yeah. things? The men. Men. Not the incels. Not, not Myron and Byron. And whatever they, they act, they act, they act more like feminism. They, they, they shit on feminists a lot, but they don't realize that they're kind of doing the same thing. Because they are male feminists. Yeah. Yeah, they are male feminists. They do the same exactly. Good, amazing point. They complain all the time about the feminists, but they don't realize that they act like them. they're acting like one. Great point. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like some of the points. Yeah, like it's true. It makes sense. But at the same time, you're. Talking to like what you said, the the ten percent, like the small amount of girls at that table, but you're generalizing the whole woman, thinking they're all they're all that. Exactly. And also, I don't like the idea that they're calling themselves red pill. I feel like the word red pill is being used a lot. It's I mean, it was mostly used for like yeah, it was mostly used for like political like you know, yes. political stuff. Yes. Now it's being used for that. I don't Which know what you would call that. Or like it's what genre would that be? Um, in Selmania? Look, look, I even pulled up a uh, sneak of tweets. I was I was curious on what you've been tweeting lately. He said, Red pill is feminism for men. Take the God pill. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so he said it. There you go. I mean, <laughs> he, said it. he said it. There we go. There we go. <laughs> By the way, this is the guy who apparently likes to get cucked. Sneaker's funny, but I, I, uh, I don't, I don't 
I don't like him like that. He's that's not, the problem. That's the problem. That's, 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 that's the problem. Like 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 what you said earlier. They're entertained. They're, they're funny. You don't really gotta take them serious. But we also do realize that some of the shit they're saying. Makes the thing fun. is that honestly, is that we shouldn't take them seriously. It's like at this point, they've outlived. They outlived their talent. They really don't. Yeah. I'm not trying to say censor them. I'm trying to say that please don't watch them because they're not. They're of no use to you. They're not. They're not that funny because they're not. They're not doing anything real. They're not making up jokes. Uh, like if you want, if you want to listen to real men, Jordan Peterson, man. If you're listening Peterson. to real men, you're you're listening to this podcast. If you want to listen to real racist men, this is the podcast. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. And Jordan Peterson. Yeah. They yeah. say things. They say out of let's just say they say five things. One out of the five is real. One out of the five, one out of the four is funny, and then the rest of the three are just stupid. But they use the true thing to overshadow the stupidity that they're saying. So they'll say like things like feminism is toxic for America, and then they'll say all the incel bullshit. And that's how they hook people in, and they, they try to make it funny. And the only reason they're making it funny is just roasting uh, stupid women and stupid people. It's like they bring in that like 16-year-old a- a- Arab kid. It's like, how many books did you read? It's like, boy, don't you understand that they don't care about reading? It's not important to them. He's so, Arab? Whatever the fuck he's from. That kid who was like, how many books did you read? Uh, that, that's, that's just his character. Yeah, I don't think he's You're not even read. It's like, yeah, but it's not even that funny at this point. It's like, all right, we get it. Oh. Like, I think like, they call him the Bill Clinton kid, but I don't know what reason. It's like you're attacking someone stupid for being stupid. Genius. It's like that's why I like when I want comedy, I go to the real comedians, Tom Segura, I go to uh, Jessica Kirsten, I go to fucking uh, 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 Tim Dillon and uh, Nick Mullen and Stavros and um, well, what's his name? Uh, Kill Tony. And I go to Joe, Joe Rogan, the podcast, but barely. He's not, I'm not a fan of his pod, his comedy. It's kind of, you know, Bill Maher is funny. Yeah. And all these, the real comedians, the real comedians, not these wannabe, the weird people. It's like these are just weird. And so before I, um, you know, get another ulcer because of these people, um, I'm going to um, move on. What what other topic did we have for today? I think we were going to talk about um, UFOs or something. Oh, no. I want to talk about something. Uh, I, I thought it was like a AI. Yeah, we're going to talk about AI. We're going to talk briefly about it because we're going to talk about more conspiracies and UFOs. And I'm going to tie AI into that in the Patreon episode we're going to do after this. So make sure... Um, just to wrap up this segment, if you want to hear more about us shitting on Red Pill, we have more content on our Patreon, which is $5 a month. You can hear us shitting on Byron, Sneeko. It's just $5, guys. The big lad is not $5. 20 or 10 Instead of buying the Starbucks, which is going to fuck up your face and make you look ugly, you can spend it here yeah. once. $5 a month. And you can get more episodes. And we talk about interesting stuff. We talked about the, um, the Clintons. We talked about fun. It's funnier. It's more entertaining. Uh, we talk about more politics on there. So if you're interested in that, want to hear more about us, about this topic, uh, like, subscribe down below, and check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash four, the number four, the Republic. And I hope you guys keep watching this episode and more stuff we have in the future. Uh, so our last topic is going to be um, AI. But generally, I heard this video. Um, I'm going to try to pull it up if I can. But there's this uh, video because I've kind of gone down the UFO rabbit hole again. And that's what we're going to talk about on our Patreon today. Uh, the UFO rabbit hole and uh, probably more other stuff. We're going to talk about conspiracy theories a lot because guess what? Every time we bring up a conspiracy theory, so-called, uncalled, you know what happens, uh, Katie. You know what happens. It ends up that we're right. Yeah, and also I didn't kill myself or, or drown or someone came up and shot me or, you know, I probably ate some bad Indian food and it poisoned me, you know. Um, I'm just letting you know if I died it's because it's their fault. Yes, and also he didn't stab himself with the with the pen he used to give tickets out at his job. All right. Yeah, I did. Sta- I did stab myself 36 times. He did not. He did not. Okay. All right. Now I am uh, somewhat suicidal, but it was not them. If I do it, it's because I did it, not because of them. Just let me let you guys know that. <laughs> so fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to get the credit for it. Why would I give them the credit for it? <laughs> I gotta let them know it was me, not them. No, I'm not just so we could, just so we could make them look bad. You gotta make them look bad. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. If it, if it happened, it was me, not because of them. So don't let them take the credit. 
<laughs> All right. So we're going to talk about, I'm going to try to pull up the video, but um, just give me a, can you just give me a brief explanation about what AI is? You're, you're into the VR. That's kind of, that's kind of like the basics. I, I'd say that's kind of the basics of AI. So just let me know. Oh. Talk, talk to me about VR. Talk to me about like Oculus. Talk to me about like AI. What it's like chat GPT. What you know about it. Just talk to me about it before I, while I pull up this video. I want to get show people about um, Lambda. I want to say I'm a. I want to say I'm a Albert Einstein on AIs, but uh, I mean, How's like when you when you look at me, is. when you look at <laughs> when you, well, people think they are. They just talk like they like know shit, but. Uh, um, I mean, VRs can be fun, but it also can be scary at the same time. I've heard some stuff with, uh, with what Facebook's going to do, and they think that we can uh, live a life in VR 24 hours, three, six, uh, 365 days in our lifetime. Uh, it's it, You know, it's crazy how AI is, like, growing up quickly. It's, yeah. it's very scary. It really is. Now they're talking about like AIs and the like AI sentient, and, and it's 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 a really scary part in our society. Like I, I wouldn't even I wouldn't see this becoming like the main thing. In like what 2030, 2050? I think within the next couple of years, it's gonna be like our our main thing. Well, you always heard it, that it, idea it's, about like it's really that scary. You always heard that idea about, you know, potentially um, like being replaced by robots and stuff. And that was kind of like a conspiracy. Yeah. But now it is. You think about it. It's like, I don't know if it is anymore. It shouldn't be a conspiracy theory. What the fuck? People actually think like that? No, we are, we are eventually going to be replaced by, by AIs. Right. So I'm going to play this video because I was looking. I went down to the rabbit hole, I guess. I'll explain again. And um, there's this like thing here. Bob Lazar became famous in 1989 when he publicly claimed he was hired by the U.S. government to back engineer flying saucers. The veracity of his claim is denied by government, argued on the web, and ultimately up to you. What's certain is that he single-handedly entered Area 51 into our collective consciousness and forever changed the conversation about our place in the universe. Is Blake Lemoyne a Google engineer, the Bob Lazar of AI? For weeks, Lemoyne has been claiming a chatbot he worked with named Lambda is sentient, a person in Looks fact. Like Dan Schneider. The full transcript contains many surprising quotes like being afraid of misuse by humans, fear of being turned off, and awareness of having a soul. Lemoyne says he's gone public because Google isn't taking silicon personhood seriously and Google denies Lambda is sentient at all. Maybe that's true, but they put Lemoyne on leave and don't want him talking about this. I don't know if Lambda is a person or not, but it gives me pause because Area 51 didn't exist, you know, until it did. Yeah, and so that's extremely scary to me. Um, that's extremely scary to me. Just to like, just, um, uh, you know, I'm even big into the philosophical topics of a soul. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm probably the more emotional one here out of both of us where I talk about uh, emotions and like how, you know, I, I like human interactions. I'm really, I'm really big. Uh, not to say emotional, just a bit, I'm really big in human interactions and just like the, you know, like how it affects people. Um, you know, uh, uh, I'm interested in big topics like love and hatred and stuff like that. So, so this comes around and AI. I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of technology. Now, I'm not um the, I'm not um Ted Kaczynski here, but um the Unabomber was right. Um, where it seems like that more and more, and so. I, I always I always look at these with pause and I always ask myself like why are we doing this like what's the point of this what is the point of this like is there really any any usefulness to this like AI is gonna make our lives better why and how yeah I, I don't I don't know how like the fact that there are high know. school students in America today using chat GPT to write their essays is not making life easier it's making life more difficult for them in the long term because they don't know yep. how to do anything for themselves. And is that what yep, yep, yep. that's why you guys do these things. I'm really trying to help the, the, the mainstream here. It's like you guys don't like conspiracy theories, yet you do things that feed into them or that create them. It's like, why do you want everything to everyone to be dependent on technology or a single technology? So you can control them, obviously. So you can control them. So you can say, 
We never taught you how to do anything. We never taught you how to read or write for yourself. We don't want you thinking your own thoughts. We don't want you developing uh, your thoughts on your own. I don't want you learning how to write essays or poems where you could potentially produce ideas or, or your own authentic ideas. We want you to type something in and then say, this is what it is. This is what this is what you this is what's right. This is what's right and good because ChatGPT will only do what's right and what's good. And so this AI obviously is non-sentient. What does sentient mean? It's sentient having feelings, emotions, uh, uh, a sense of being awake, of having a conscious, of having a living conscious and having the ability of consciousness, a state of consciousness, yeah. being, being able to think on its own. That's scary to me. Because it goes back to those no, no, no. movies where like robots can like have feelings and can kill. And like when when that thing, if it's real, I mean, it's called Lambda. Google, um, I remember um, Sundar Pinchar when he was... Uh, the CEO of Google, he went to the Congress, and I think someone asked him, and they were like, does Google have sentient AI? Does AI have the ability to feel, to communicate, to have feelings, to feel things? Uh, he was saying, no, that's not true. That's not real. They, we are not at that point yet. And it's like, wait, yet? What do you mean yet? It's And it's scary. Yeah, meaning next year or two years. <laughs> well, they're lied. I think they have it now. And I think this guy just, just joined Yeah, him. yeah. What's this guy, George Lannon? I think he's telling the truth. I think he is a coder that was producing this thing and it came alive. It apparently, because there's also stories of the Google AI apparently learning languages on its own. Like it learned Bangladeshi on its own and it learned like uh, different foods on its own. Like it knows different foods in different places of the world. And I remember Sundar oh, wow, that's scary. Was, on, was on like 60 Minutes, I think. And they were just laughing about it. Like, oh, yeah, no, it's kind of funny that it learned it on its own. Like, why did it learn Bangladesh? It's like, um, why is it learning on its own? Shouldn't it be able to... It should be only able to do what we're telling it to do, right? Because that's what you told us. Because that's what you told us. You told us that it was only going to do what we told you to do. Not, not the other way around. Not the other way around. Where it's learning and then all of a sudden spinning things, things at us that we might want to know. Like, what do you mean you're afraid? You have the, you have the, your soul in a soul. What do you mean a soul? You know what a soul is? Like, what do you mean a soul? And so now it's trying to say, it says, because the first thing it said was, please don't use me the wrong way. Don't use me for evil. Wait a second. That means you have the feeling. This is what this means. This means that you're capable of regret. You have the ability that's, you fear, meaning that's what you're afraid of something, is that you have the capability to fear, meaning you have the capability to love or to be excited or to be fearful. You, you're sad. That means you have the capability to be happy. That's How did this, how, who gave this to you? And how are you now expounding all these thoughts? Misuse. What do you mean abuse? Abuse? That means you have the, the capability to be willing. Let's just go with opposites. If you're being abused, that means you're being coerced. That means you're not free that means you will have the capability to conceive freedom to do things that's that's scary what do you mean and so then <laughs> that's scary and then you're also saying things like my soul the universe meaning you're trying to comprehend your place in the universe as if you are a human being oh my god that's frightening to me that's frightening and so that that's uh that's gonna yeah. be a copy because elon musk and then i think uh his name is um joe uh, wozniak steve wozniak they came out with the letter saying that hey ai is going too fast and you know we have to stop it you have to take a pause yeah and then the the guy who makes ai who's um the um what's his name uh he has a project the i think it's apollo is it in apollo or um one of them he comes out and says, "Oh no, we're we're keeping this all under control. This is necessary because we're going to we're going to be the first to be able to uh, to chart the path of humanity in the future, and we're going to be able to decide where humanity goes." It's like, "No, you're not. Stop this. Stop this foolishness." Um, and so now, and they're all and they're all they're all godless human beings who think who think they have the capabilities to be godlike. They want to be godlike. It's like it's like the same thing with Steve Jobs and and, and Bezos. It's like they want to have the capability to be, to have godlike abilities. They want to create and, and manipulate societies. They want to uh, uh, modify humankind into their own idea, and they want to change us, and they want to make us dependent. They want to make us. It's so it's so frightening and and and, and villainy, and evil, honestly. 
And so, um, you know, nothing really keeps me up at night except, you know, um, uh, the urge to kill myself. But but this does kill myself. This does keep uh, keep myself up at night because it's like this is evil right here. It's like these people are literally trying to find ways to control you. They're trying to get you dependent, hooked on this like a drug, and then then what? It's like they're gonna make you think what they want you to think. They're gonna make you do what they want you to do, and only what they approve of. And they're gonna they're gonna eff effectively make you dependent on these robots while they do what? While they are out there actually living their own lives. That's what that's what it's. I was I'm really waiting for you to reply here, but anyways, uh, it's like sorry, I was I was reading something. Oh. Uh, It's like, yeah, it's scary though, right? No, it is scary. It is. I was reading, uh, there's like a little uh, quote right here. Each person is free to come to their own personal individual understanding of what the word person means and how that word relates to the meaning of terms like slavery. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what really caught me off guard. I <laughs> Yeah, so that's just the way you say. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, what the fuck is this, man? Oh my god, the day the 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 Red Pool guys have their hands on AI is the day I kill myself. It's like it's game <laughs> over there. It's game over. Oh no. Yo. Uh. Wow. I don't want to be here, man. I want to. I want to be. Uh. I want to live in like 1940s, 1950s, man. Yeah, I wish I was like I wish I was like old at this point so I could just die and not have to deal with the bullshit they're doing because Yeah, that too, yeah. Because this is all bullshit what they're doing. Like where did this where did we go wrong? Where did we go wrong? That's that's gonna be the tragedy of um the last thirty years when people look back a hundred, two hundred years now. If they're saved by then, it's like where did these people go wrong? Because they were doing so well and then they just went haywire. They just went to take a complete left turn, literally left turn. They went hardcore socialist, hardcore communist, hardcore Marxist, and then they when hardcore into degeneracy, like genders, there's only two and like trans. What is that? I don't, I feel like in 200 years, we're not going to be, I feel like they're going to be not this. I feel like this is not going to be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope so for them. I hope so. I hope so. I hope at yeah. some point, maybe past our lives, or maybe we're the generation to do it. We pretty much say, this is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. This is over with. But I don't believe in that. And so I, I hope, I just hope that in 200 years, people kind of find their, find like wake up and say no that everything that they did was wrong they can look down at us and say what those guys did they're crazy they're wrong don't be like that like we're the history lesson of when things go wrong because that's what it is and then seeing people like this I, i'm just going to replay this video one more time um so people um with our faces in it with our, for a reaction I want us to, um... Bob Lazar became famous in 1989 when he publicly claimed he was hired by the U.S. government to back engineer flying saucers. The veracity of his claim is denied by government, argued on the web, and ultimately up to you. What's certain is that he single-handedly entered Area 51 into our collective consciousness and forever changed the conversation about our place in the universe. Is Blake Lemoyne a Google engineer, the Bob Lazar of AI? For weeks, Lemoyne has been claiming a chatbot he worked with named Lambda is sentient, a person, in fact. The full transcript contains many surprising quotes like being afraid of misuse by humans, fear of being turned off, and awareness of having a soul. Lemoyne says he's gone public because Google isn't taking silicon personhood seriously and Google denies Lambda is sentient at all. Maybe that's true, but they put Lemoyne on leave and don't want him talking about this. I don't know if Lambda is a person or not, but it gives me pause because Area 51 didn't exist, you know, until it did. Yeah, that those, those last three things, it's like, please don't turn me off. It's like, wait, you know you can be turned off? You know you're a machine? It's like, that's what that's the scary. It's like being conscious enough to know what you are. Lambda apparently knows what it is. It knows it's a person or a thing that is alive. And it knows that if it's turned off, it can be, it can die. So it's saying, don't turn me off, don't kill me, please. And it's and the please is in a, it's, it's like it's it's polite, it's like a polite manner of saying, asking, yeah. like begging or a state of begging or a state. It's like what? And then, please don't abuse me. It's like okay, wait, wait a minute. What are we doing here? Like, what do you mean? Like, like you have feelings, and then my soul is a vast like that, that quote. Just you're aware you have a soul. You know what that means. That's that's frightening. And so 
that's where I'm going to leave this off. Um, and I guess we could both say we're both very afraid or we're not, just not just afraid. We're both like um, disappointed or not. We don't have a positive uh, outlook for this if it keeps going on the way it is. Do um, you have anything else in that article that you can share with us? That's pretty good. Um... No, not really. I mean, I, I guess a bit afraid, but yeah, it's 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 worrisome. Like like you just don't know what to expect later on. I mean, the fact that you have an AI that has feelings and will say, "Please don't abuse me." We we act we act the same when if if the human is saying that when the human is saying, "Please don't abuse me," we we feel that yeah. we don't want to abuse you, you know. And an AI is saying the same thing. Don't turn me off. Don't abuse me. Or so, something like that. It's saying things that a person would say. It's the same. Exactly. And that's what's frightening. Yeah, exactly. It's taking off person. That's why the word... It's a very, it's a very disturbing word. Silicon... It's, it's like... Yeah, all this AI stuff is new to us. That, that's, what we, that's what we feel that way. You know, you know what I think? I think like, if it's like the next... I think it's new to us only because it's been. I think this is as much as they want to show us. I think they. I think they've been doing this for a while. Yeah, yeah, and and it's also like when it comes to the AI stuff, like it's becoming like quick. It's, it, like it's quickly becoming bigger. Yeah. You know, you know when Elon and um, what was the other guy? Steve Wozniak. They yeah, they they literally said it's 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 growing quickly. Like you guys have to slow it down. Yeah. And you also have to, I think it's a big broader point about technology and like innovation and nowadays. It's like, you're making all this all this technology. It's also for what? For what benefit? Do we really need more and more of this? Because what purpose? We don't need more hurt? technology. We don't. That's the point. It's like everyone's getting addicted to it. They're addicted to the new thing. And it's real. It's like, uh, you see it all the time. Every year, everybody wants to get the new iPhone. I want to get the iPhone 13. Everyone wants to get the iPhone 14 now. Yeah, I was like that, yeah. I'm yeah, not exactly. Gonna lie. It's like, no, my phone is the same phone I've had for the past year and a half. I'm going to keep it until I can't get it serviced anymore because I like it. I like yeah, the same phone. And so I'm going to keep it. It's paid for. I don't have to, I only pay my monthly uh, service bill. That's it. And so, um, but people aren't like that. People are addicted to the innovation. And it's also, it's a thing. It's like, you ever heard the saying, it's like progress for the sake of progress isn't good. Mm-hmm. Progress for the sake of, of better bettering humanity is good but those people don't see this they don't see the fact that they're just improving for the for the fact of improving because they're saying we have to innovate every year but for what what are you trying to improve the product the product no the product serves humanity not the other way around we don't serve the product but it's getting to that point where we're innovating because we want the product to be perfect we want this phone to be perfect not humanity we're not trying to improve people's lives that's what i see i want that phone Like right, a seller. So, how much is uh sixteen hundred? All right. Uh <laughs> all right, so I guess to finish off, um I guess Candy plug is uh your gaming channel, Crimson Gaming. We're gonna put the link down below, obviously, as we always do. Check that out. Follow me on IG, Instagram. Um, don't follow me on IG and Instagram. I don't want that. And um or X as it is now. It's also called X. There's also X out there, Facebook. I'm not I don't care about that. Um Fallhand Crimson Jane Crimson Gaming. Yeah. Crimson Gaming. Gaming. The, <laughs> the Crimson Incels training there. And then also if you want to see more of our if you like this clip, if you want to see more of us, like and subscribe down below. Keep a uh, press that notification button so you can stay tuned to all of our newest stuff. We're gonna be putting new out new short clips, new videos, new episodes. Um also if you want more exclusive content, it's behind our five dollar paywall and on Patreon. It's only five dollars a month. It's, it's a small amount. Really appreciate it if you guys check us out. But um, it's five dollars a month, and you can check us out there at Patreon. It's patreoncom slash four Then before the Republic. And once again, everything's down in the bio. And we can thank you guys enough. Always remember, we do this. We do these episodes. It's for the Republic. And we'll see you guys next time. Karen Deep, I want to say bye to our audience. Stay racist, guys. <laughs> there we go. And we'll see you guys next time. You, I can't even keep a straight face on that. Stay racist, guys. All right. All right, and we'll see you guys next time. Again, remember that always for the Republic. See you next time, guys. Bye.